my name is Carol Carter, and I'm delighted to be here with our Young Professional Inclusive Leadership Council members who are joining us for this panel. And we are exploring today the topic of uh, professional leadership skills, uh, looking specifically at mentorship, internship success, and ways to build leadership skills. So it's a delight to have you all join us. And I would like to go around the virtual room and have everybody introduce themselves, tell a little bit about how they got to be on this panel, what their role is, what their job is, and also where they went to college and what they studied so that some of our students who are still in school will know a little bit more. And uh, Isana, we could kick it off with you and then maybe go to Charlene and Haley and then to Ken. And then Michael, if you want to say a few words as well, but Isana is the event planner and has yeah, been yeah. doing a lot of the background for this. So welcome. Yeah, thank you, Carol. My name is Asana. Right now I'm currently in my last semester at the University of Florida, and I'm super excited to be on this council. Charlene is someone who I was able to work with over this past summer within the consulting space, and she's so awesome and she brought me over to this council and it's been really cool to start doing work with you all, and I'm very excited for the event today, and I'll pass it on, I believe, to Charlene. Yes, thank you so much, Asana. Hello, everyone. My name is Charlene Moss. Um, I am co-president of the Young Professional Leaders, the Young Professionals Inclusive Leadership Council um, with Haley. And I went to Washington University in St. Louis. I studied finance, so I was a business gal. Um, and I'm really excited to be on this panel and talk through um, mentorship and professional skills with all of you. Haley? Thanks, Charlene. Uh, I'm Haley. I am also co-president of the Young Professional Inclusive Leadership Council with Charlene, who has just been awesome. Um, and thanks to Sana and the team at Global Minded for planning all of this and putting it together. Really excited to be here. Um, I went to Indiana University and I studied biochemistry um, with minors in gender studies and geology. And so now I am working at the Park People in Denver, which promotes trees and parks for a healthy, resilient future. And Haley was also part of our um, 2017 First Gen Leadership class and then was an intern with Global Minded. So she has kind of an arc of time perspective um, on that. And uh, then we'll take you to somebody on our Executive Leadership Council and that's Ken Abs, who's just a phenomenal leader. Ken, tell us a little bit about your path, your story, and uh, your college experience, and then how you're now working with some of the young um, leaders within the Global Minded Stable. Okay, well, thank you, Carol, and thank you for inviting me to participate with this panel today, Carol, and, and uh, I wanna just let the panel uh, of young leaders know how proud I am of you and how honored I am to be here with you today and look forward to the discussion around leadership. Um, I am on the other end of the spectrum. I've gone down the roads well-traveled that uh, all of you have to look forward to. And I can tell you, it should be an exciting journey for you as you go through your, your life and career. Uh, but I grew up here and I live in Charlotte, North Carolina now. I grew up in the area in uh, a little small town called Lake City, South Carolina, uh, the son of uh, farmers and and, and scrappy parents, let me just put it that way. And I was always tell Cheryl, I, uh, I always tell Carol, uh, give her my sharecropper story, but she cries too much. So I have to soften it a little bit. But uh, I grew up in South Carolina. I went to college at South Carolina State University an HBCU in Orangeburg, South Carolina. I majored in engineering. Uh, thought that engineering is what I wanted to do and be all my life. I did it for a while and then went back to school full time uh, to change careers. I liked engineering, however, it's a great field, uh, but I wanted to change careers and I went to business school and I uh, went to Stanford. And from Stanford, I went back into industry and through industry have been through telecom, healthcare, uh, startups, Silicon Valley, uh, you name it. So uh, I can share some experiences with you that will be uh, hopefully helpful uh, across all of those. 
I uh, got a chance to meet Carol and had an opportunity to join her team uh, uh, because I love what Global Minded is all about. And I was meeting young people where they are and I was opening paths for them to be successful. Uh, that, that is in line with, with who I am and, and what I think is important. And I do think mentoring is important and key. So that's why I'm here and uh, look forward to helping out and, and being supportive and learning from you any way I can. Awesome, thank you so much. And I'll also share that Ken is mentoring one of our students at North Carolina a and and also he's got, we call it an experimental group we call uh, mentoring in the one to many, which actually it's he and his colleague Patty and they're mentoring like a little cohort of like nine to 10 students. So instead of just one to one, we think it's also a very powerful model when you can do sort of the one to many, which is a little bit how we're gonna be learning from each other today as well. So thanks everyone for those intros. And then um, Mike, do you wanna go ahead? And then we can also meet Barbara and Kimberly and, and you can just share a little bit more about the program you've been working with and what these students have been doing. Absolutely, thank you, Carol. Um, so my name is Mike Brokus. I'm a program manager for um, APLU, which is the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. Um, so we're a, a higher education nonprofit, um, uh, you know, dedicated to student equity, student success, personalized learning, um, uh, a lot of other things. Um, and we work in a, a network uh, of other nonprofit organizations uh, called the Every Learner Everywhere Network. Um, that network hosts um, is hosting this semester 13 student fellows um, who are, you know, college students. Um, who get, who through this fellowship get the experience of uh, working on one of our projects. Um, so for example, Kimberly is working with, uh, with me and some others at APLU on a, a community of practice project um, where we're bringing together faculty from across institutions um, and specifically promoting, um, you know, equitable and evidence-based teaching, um, you know, trying to work towards better student outcomes. Um, and then there's also a discipline specific focus. Um, so we're, we're focusing on biology, chemistry, uh, math and writing specifically. Um, and courses that we know um, are high enrollment courses that um, students of color, minoritized students tend to uh, not do as well in. And we're trying to address those, those sort of equity gaps. Um, so like I said, Kim is working on that project with me. Barbara is another uh, Every Learner Everywhere Network fellow who's working on a, a, a separate project. Um, but I'll let them introduce themselves and um, also wanted to say we have, uh, you know, se several other fellows who, because of, um, because they're students themselves and have busy personal lives wanted to attend but had last minute conflicts and weren't able to. Um, but we're so glad that um, you all are here, and also that the sessions being recorded, um, so that they can engage, um, you know, engage after the fact so I know that many of the fellows are really eager to do that so just really grateful to, to Carol from global minded and to all of you for, for being here. Thanks so much, Mike. Kimberly, do you wanna go next? I'm sure, I guess I, um, I'll tell you. I, what I, the first part of this year was absolutely amazing getting into the um, ELE fellowship. Um, and then they invited us back um, for the fall, which um, I graduated with my undergrad in accounting um, in May and went on to my MBA. So um, I'm toughing out the MBA now, um, the latter part of my life and my, you know, in my middle part of my life. So I find it um, so very interesting. And, you know, I, I was a young parent to begin with and never did, you know, I took a short associate's degree um, for electronics, but never did go back to school and actually went into hairdressing most of my life. So this, you know, the whole college experience has really opened my mind um, and also excelled my two grown children into college, which is awesome, too, because I'm first in my family to attend. So thank you guys for being here today. That is awesome. And then Barbara just wrote us a little note. Barbara, are you able to um, are you able to um, share with everybody else? She wrote a little note saying that she went back into um, attendee 
So, okay, well, no worries. And if you wanna come back into the sort of the panelist zone or we'll do it later when we're doing questions, feel free to do that and we'd love to get to know you. So, well, let's get started. We're gonna cover a few different things today and really um, look at maybe some of the inside secrets or some of the things that um, people who are in the world of work um, look back now, like um, Charlene and Haley and Isan is a senior. So she is, um, she is here because she is such a, an example of how to um, go after opportunities and start making opportunities for, for yourself. So we're gonna look broadly at a few different things. We're gonna look at mentorship and then also how to, you know, how you can be a mentor and then how you can be effectively a mentee and really make the most out of working with others. Uh, we're gonna look at some of the professional skills that you can build through different things that you're able to do like the um, ELE fellow um, opportunity and the ways that that can help you build your network. And then we're gonna look uh, broadly at leadership and how you can really uniquely develop what is within yourself that's unique about you. So why don't I start um, first um, with one of the first questions, which is what does mentorship mean to you and how has it shaped your professional career? And Isana, again, since you're a senior, let's start with you on that. And then we can go to uh, Charlene and Haley, and then we'll go to Ken. Yeah, so I think what mentorship means to me will change throughout my life, both in a personal and professional way. Right now, what it means to me is finding someone whose values align with mine and so that I have a really good role model and framing for what I want to work towards. For me, even if I don't have the same exact end goal, it, it does set up some kind of framework for what my next steps and what my steps in a couple of years might look like. And it provides a lot of like psychological security, knowing I can come to that person and know that because we have a lot of alignment with our values and what matters to us, that their opinion will really resonate with mine. And I, I've talked about this before, but Charlene is someone who I got to work with this summer and she was also my mentor in this. It was this really special connection. It was my first time ever having a mentor and it just meant so much to me. I was really surprised by how it shifted from a professional to a more personal type of relationship as well. So that's my short answer for that. Well, that's a great answer. And I just want to say that um, Charlene is a really good networker connector person. And so when you can see that someone has a talent for something and they might be a good fit for something, you know, you can always make those connections for others when you start to see that. And it's not everybody's superpower, but if that happens to be one of yours, we all have different things. Um, you know, don't ever hold back when you could be connecting people who can make a difference with each other, because that's really, that's really great. So, and I, and I will also say with Isana that um, I have just been introduced to her recently over the last month, but I think she, even while she's in school, is just developing the skills of somebody who's been out working for five years, just because she's got uh, um, that ability to self-direct, that ability to follow through, the ability to really um, make a personal connection. So just want to acknowledge you, Isana, for those kinds of things as we go on. So Charlene. Yes, of course. And, and thank you, Asana and Carol. Um, to me, mentorship is really about building a relationship um, and a professional relationship at that. And we can unpack that a bit later um, with someone who can exchange like some learning with you. Um, and, you know, previously for me, it's looked like someone I've gotten to know that I related to, as Asana mentioned, maybe values wise, identity wise, that's really important. Maybe they're also a first gen college student, maybe their dad's also in the military. Um, and someone who can understand the experiences that you might be going through, um, whether you're early, mid, late career. Um, and I think like, just secondly, and lastly, a mentor is also someone who can open up like new channels for information for you. Um, and so for instance, like I'm the first in my family to have a business career. 
Um, and so that means I couldn't go to my parents or family for any advice on how to do that um, or what is important in business school or what I should wear. Um, and so just being able to find someone who likely has more knowledge in that area and can connect me to more folks with that type of knowledge um, it is really useful. And I think something a mentor can, can really help with. Thank you, Haley. Yeah, I mean, I, I first just want to say I want to echo everything that Sana and Charlene have been saying. Um, I think it's right on point, and so I won't try to repeat too much, but maybe just add that, um, you know, the mentors in my life that have meant the most to me were the ones that helped break barriers that I was facing, whether they knew it or not. For example, I think of my high school mentor who... Um, he had a neurological disability and I was just recently diagnosed with ADHD. And so him and I were really able to connect. And I think he saw how I would be able to thrive in an academic environment and give me tips, even though I didn't really know it at the time. And he was also like a, just a, a queer scientific professional. And it was just so powerful looking back, him and I have had those conversations. Like, yeah, like it was very intentional, but not, in a like obvious or condescending way. And it was just very like, it was just a very beautiful like mentorship relationship. And so that's always what I think of when talking about mentorships is how they can break those barriers, but in a really collaborative, like mutually beneficial way. Awesome, thank you, Haley and Ken. Let me try to come at it, Carol, in a way that ties together what uh, these three young ladies just said, because I so much agree with, with it. Um, and let me bring my own experiences of being mentored uh, into it as well. I, I think, uh, first of all, as a mentor, it's always an honor to, to, to have someone wanting to spend their time with you. So as a mentee, you should always feel that you are really providing some value to the mentor uh, to have access to you and for you to open up about what's important. Um, I have the opportunity to, to be mentoring Donovan here at, at North Carolina a and and some other kids in some other groups as Carol has mentioned here. And the highest priority for me is to try to understand what's important to them. Because at the end of the day, I don't, I don't feel uh, and don't think at any, at any level it's important for me to try to tell a young person what they ought to be. Um, it's my role, if I'm going to be helpful and supportive, is to try to figure out what it is that they really love and what they really have a passion for. And, how, if at all, I can help them get there. Um, and that is, is, is what it means to me to be part of a relationship uh, where it's a mentee and a mentor. So, so those, I, I would say that's central uh, to it and getting there. And then the last piece I'll just say on this part is there, as a mentor, you, there'll be people who are, should and will have, uh, uh, or interest in helping you and mentoring you, and they will be valuable at a certain portion in your life. So it's always important to have that thread of people and be open to relationships because uh, I think as Haley was just mentioning there, uh, that was a great relationship for the person uh, when she was, uh, does she think back when she was in high school? And you need those. And then there will be others who will be great for you when you're in college and you need those. And then there were others that would be great for you at different times in your career. So it's a, it's a collective process and, and you know, be open to taking advantage of that as, uh, as you go through, you know, through your school and, and your career. Thank you so much, Ken, for that. And that kind of um, links to another question that I saw had put forth, which is, you know, how do you find a mentor? And right now, while you're in college, um, there are people who you should ask yourself, have you met these folks? Have you met your 
uh, professors that teach your classes? Have you met your teaching assistants that lead the sessions on Fridays? Have you met your advisor? And these are some people who might be able to play that role. Um, the other role is that the things that you join, like Global Minded or organizations on campus, these provide other webs of really interesting and diverse people that can help your world to be bigger. So that's to kind of answer that question. How do you find a mentor? I mean, I think it starts with just like have an intention that you want to meet somebody interesting. And like over the next week, you'll meet that cool person. But um, joining and being able to be open to that is another, another way that that can happen. So that's one question. But let me go back to everybody else with um, how do you set expectations, goals, and boundaries with your mentor? And why don't I, I'm just gonna start asking each of you different questions. So why don't we say, Charlene, if you can answer that one, we'll go to some other questions for, for the other folks. Yeah, of course. And I think, you know, a lot of that comes from a lot of self-awareness and self-reflection and intention, which I think Ken did a great job of just mentioning, um, because you can meet someone and they can give you a cake and like present the cake to you. And if you are not like comfortable with self enough to say, hmm, this cake is for me, I can take it, then that opportunity is gone for you. Um, and so when when you want to uh, just be able to like glean opportunity, present yourself in a way where your mentor is passing things to you, um, it's gonna require just some, some energy and motivation and just openness to, to something that might bring you out of your comfort zone, which I think um, a lot of what mentor relationships can do for you, right? It's someone that likely has more experience or knowledge in a field that you don't, which is something like naturally uncomfortable for you because you don't have that knowledge and just being able to listen and accept and trust um, can be really important. Um, when thinking about like building trust between you and your mentor and boundaries, I think, you know, the first thing you want to do is focus on the relationship. Um, yes, you want it to be um, something that benefits both of you. And so that's you bring your energy and the mentor bringing knowledge, experience, care. Um, and you want to really respect that. So you might... Um, you want to get to know your mentor. What do they like to do? What do they know about? What are they involved in? And you want your mentor to know about you because you want to be in the back of their mind when they're hearing about things that they think you would be perfectly slotted for. Um, and so you just want to potentially like have regular check-ins. Keep in mind that folks have busy schedules, so you might set up a monthly call. Um, but being proactive in that way is really useful. That communicates that you are willing, open, and ready to be challenged and given things um, that that come the mentor's way. So um, regular check-ins, relationship building, um, being open and honest and having the energy to just go after things, I think could be really useful in a mentor relationship. Um, and then lastly on boundaries, uh, I think you know what you want to bring is your honest self and a ready self. And I say that because I was going to say best self, but I don't think that that would be an honest relationship, right? You, you wanna present yourself well and you want your mentor to know, hey, like. I'm struggling potentially in this math class, or I have insecurity when I go to a networking event and I want to meet someone. Like those are the types of things that you would communicate ideally to someone who could mentor you, um, who could help you through those issues. Um, this is that would the mentor relationship is not a venue where you want to be the perfect person because um, again, it's an opportunity to learn and advance and grow. Um, however, like when things um, you know, your mentor is not like a therapist, for instance, um, because all of us, you know, have our own emotional issues and things we're working on. And so you just want to be really um, intentional about kind of the asks that you have. And I say asks to make it simple, but it's not like you're going to be constantly asking your mentor for things. But, um, you know, like if you maybe need help with resume review, um, you maybe won't ask for resume review help every week. You know, you may, you know, schedule your monthly check-ins with your mentor and have a few questions that you have for them each month, you know, just to keep things really um, consistent. Again, show that you are thinking about what is valuable for your time together and also being honest and authentic with each other. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for that. And um, Haley, what about this one for you? How do you address um, certain issues with your mentor? Like if your mentor says something and, you know, you don't understand it or you might find it, you know, problematic. I don't know how often that happens, but I think when everyone's on a learning journey, we're all learning from each other. So how do you address that? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, well, first I would say that typically mentors sign up to be a mentor because they wanna make a positive impact or help someone who they probably see a little bit of themselves in um, or a younger version of themselves or you know, more early on in your career, whatever it is, they see a part of themselves in their mentee. And so, and, I, and bouncing off of what Sherlyn said, bring your honest self and your authentic self. And so given those two things together, I would at least like to think that if you approached your mentor and said, these, these things are making me um, you know, uncomfortable or maybe we should discuss them, like here are some other resources to help you along your journey of learning because we are all human um, and we're all learning and unlearning every day. Um, However, I would give a caveat to that and say that if your mentor is not very responsive or not very positive about that and doesn't really take that as an opportunity to learn and grow themselves, because whenever I, when I mentored my little sister through Big Brothers Big Sisters, she taught me so much and that was a privilege and an honor to have as a mentor. So I would say if your mentor isn't looking at it as like an opportunity to grow, they might not be the best fit. and you deserve to have a mentor that is a good fit for you. So I would just try to be honest. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good point. And Isana, what might be a, a really uh, diplomatic way to raise something like that with someone who maybe it's not a perfect fit, but they're a good person, but maybe not the perfect fit for you? What would be um, a really um, kind and diplomatic way to bring that up so that both people are honored and um, you know, able to work with different kinds of people? Yeah, I love that question. I think starting with the assumption that you both want the best for each other personally, professionally is a good place to start. And then approaching it with just very clear, open communication of, I really appreciated our time working together and I've learned X, Y, Z from you. I'm seeing that in my future, I might need guidance in these areas, which you might not have the most natural fit for. And I'd really like to keep in contact with you, keep you in my network, but I'm going to try to reach out to these people to try to fill that. Um, and I think if this person cares for you truly, then there's no offense taken from something like that because we all want the other person to succeed and prosper. But yeah, I think the clear open communication there is key and keeping the... I think it's good to bring in emotions to these conversations to a limit um, with not making it too emotionally charged and to focus on any very negative characteristics if that has ar arisen in your um, relationship. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And also, you know, over the course of your career, and then maybe Ken can speak to this, um, there are some times where you work with the manager and they're like not the perfect fit for you, or they do not exactly see, you know, your gifts, talents, and abilities. And sometimes it's really big growth to work with people like that because, um, you know, you're able to kind of go in directions maybe you wouldn't be going in otherwise. And sometimes you don't always have a choice. This is just sometimes who you're working with. Then there's other times where you have a manager and they're amazing and you just feel like, oh my gosh, there's so many incredible things you can do. But Ken, can you speak to those kinds of situations and how yeah. you maneuver yeah. those I, situations? Yeah, I most I most certainly can. And let me try to not be so verbose because I can go on for a long time on, on those things. And I, I think Asana and Charlene and Haley has done a great job teeing them up. There, there, there are two or three things I want to say related to it, uh, Carol. There, one is everyone just we're human and so everyone isn't going to be a good mentor <laughs> so you just you know you you know it's, it's what's the old saying you got to kiss a few frogs to find the prince so um you know you're gonna have to kiss some frogs through, through the process so that's one and so accept that is normal the, the second thing though is it when you find a good mentor one of the things they want to do is broaden your network. They don't want to isolate, they should not want to isolate you to a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them and be uh, offended when you need something else 
although you could encounter those. When you do, or if you do, uh, and uh, Asana, I think you addressed it right, and Charlene did too, just being honest, that is always the best thing. And the way I've always tried to do it when I felt like I was bottleneck was, was I would always, always, and I tend to use it as my approach for people. I don't now, I'm, I'm on the other side of it. But when I was coming along as a young person like you guys, I would always just ask people for guidance. I find that that approach, and you, you guys are very smart, and I know you do that, it opens it up and, and let them know that if they are not someone who has knowledge on whatever the issue, the situation, the opportunity is, do they know someone who does and can help because you're looking for some guidance there. And I also found it was a good way to a question you asked, asked earlier, Carol, about meeting and finding mentors. It's a good way to identify a mentor uh, is just saying, because most people in leadership roles and everything else, they're used to giving guidance. So in one way, you're kind of hitting their ego. <laughs> um, but, but in another way, you're kind of letting them know, I, I am a vessel. Uh, I'm looking for information to help me get my sales up and be successful. And, 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 and I would appreciate it if you can help me do that. So, so those are the things that, you know, that I've um, found useful. And, but accepting the fact, as you three have already articulated, that everyone in a mentor relationship won't always be perhaps the right one sometimes and useful. So you kind of keep on going there. And let me just say this last thing and I'll shut up on this one, Carol. Um, we've all been in situations where people say, you know what, I really like hanging around with Carol. And you say, well, why? And when, when, when you get right down to it, they say, well, you know, she's fun. Uh, she's, I enjoy being around her. She's smart and all of that. Remember that that is true in mentoring too. People like to be around positive people. And it tends to attract people to you without you having to work to do it. You know, they'll say, you know, well, I met Charlene, uh, I met Asana, Haley, and I really would like to help them and without you even asking because they get that positive energy out of you and what you bring to it. So don't underestimate that superpower you have uh, to use that term of, of enthusiasm. And, and those types of things that you're projecting just in your everyday life to, to help you recruit mentors. That's a great point, Ken. So, well, excellent on the big picture on mentors and mentorship. And why don't we switch gears for a little bit and look at um, internships and um, maybe just to ask, you know, Charlene and Haley while they were in college, what internships did you have? What did you learn from those internships? And um, what other kinds of things can, can students do to make the most out of those opportunities? I'm gonna go first, Charlene, and then we can go to Haley. Sure thing, yes. So um, there were a few different experiences I had in college. The first, um, and I learned three different things through them. Um, the first was only a week long of work, but it was focused on surprise mentorship um, and, and working with high school students who were looking to learn about what an undergraduate business uh, program was like. And so from there, I learned that I really, what type of work I like to do. Um, and I think that is really important as a person who is in school, in inter internship, um, looking to figure out what to do next. It is always so helpful. I'll always overemphasize self-awareness and understanding of self um, because that can help you really orient and turn yourself toward the opportunities and people that really align with you. In my second internship in college, I worked at a foundation in uh, Chicago. Um, and there I learned what an office environment requires. You know, there are a lot of like small rules that can come with working in an office. Um, for instance, you know, how to build a relationship with your manager, for instance, and making sure that you understand office politics, for instance, um, do they go out every Friday for lunch? You want to be invited to that lunch because that's where all the people that you work with are talking and building relationships that maybe you didn't previously have access to. And so just being able to pick up on those very small things that are 
communicated subtly and not explicitly told to you like on the first day, like, hey, you need to be friends with these people in the office. That That is rarely said. Um, and so I learned a lot about that as well. And then in my third internship, um, I worked at a bank and I worked in a, on a banking floor and that was very intense. And, you know, I learned a bit about competition in the workplace. I, I won't um, lie about that. Uh, and, you know, I think it's really important for you to recognize and think about what type of environment you want to work in. Uh, because I realized from that experience that I did not want to work in the environment that I had uh, signed up for and that I didn't want to work those many hours. And I didn't like the energy of the people, you know, like that is a really important experience as well. It really helped me calibrate to where on the spectrum of competition hours, work ethic I wanted to be, um, all with the intent of better, like, like tuning my radio signal to find the opportunities that work best for me. So. Thank you, Charlene. And then I'm just gonna quickly share before we go to Haley that I had um, two internships when I was in college and both of them were things that I was not meant to do. Like I thought I wanted to be a lawyer and I worked in Washington DC one summer, you know, for common cause and one of our senators and I met a lot of lawyers and I was like, you actually have very little in common with these folks. And not that they're not lovely people, but I just knew like that was not gonna be the thing. And then the next summer I worked in Washington, in uh, New York City for a nonprofit, but it was really like a slow moving nonprofit. So I thought all of nonprofit was slow moving. Well, it's not, but I thought it was. So I was like, there's no way I'm a good fit for that either. Cause I'm way needing to do more than read the New York Times front to back every day and make a few copies. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead, Haley. <clears throat> Thanks, um, good thoughts from both of you. I would say that generally from my internship experiences, I have learned what I don't wanna do, what I do want to do, and then how to do it. Um, because similar to kind of what Sherlyn said about just learning about the office environment and how no one in their family had ever been a, in a business world position, um, being a first generation college student and like growing up below the poverty line, like I had no idea what the professional world looked like. Um, for me, from my perspective, I had just figured out high school and actually getting into college. And then when I got there, I was like, what is happening? Um, and so a lot of my family kind of pressured me to go that like really hard science way because it's very stable. You cracked into college, just go the most stable academic route. And from my first internship working as a research associate in a biochemistry lab, I learned that sitting in a quiet, like sterile, lonely environment is not great for someone with ADHD. <laughs> So I was like, no, this cannot be my world. It's like, I need more <laughs> going on. Um, and so then my second internship was with Global Minded, which was the exact opposite. <laughs> it was just very like, there's people around all the time and you're doing things that feel good and feel impactful, but also you can get really like analytical and quantitative with it and very like research oriented with you know, nonprofit impacts. So that's when I kind of decided I wanted to go that route instead. Um, and so then my last internship was a social media marketing internship for um, a public health nonprofit in Bloomington, Indiana that worked with HIV positive um, and homeless uh, uh, clients in the Bloomington, Indiana area. And um, I think that just solidified like working in the public nonprofit charitable sector of the world was really where I felt like I belonged. It was a lot of high energy people, just really positive, like Ken was talking about, just like that positive aura of like, some things might, some things aren't wrong, but we can come together and mobilize around these solutions. So that's what I learned. Awesome. Isana, what about you? Did you have a chance to have one or two internships? I have. I've been doing internships since the beginning of college, and I've been really lucky for that. I think the biggest thing for me has been redefining what networking meant for me. I think coming into college, I saw networking as a very transactional type of relationship where I'm 
I'm very focused on personal relationships and interpersonal relationships, and I like for them to feel deep and meaningful. And I saw networking as this kind of facey connection I had with someone where I was asking for something and it felt bad for me. And so I realized that networking can be really different from that. And I could have some kind of genuine connection and that extends to internships as in when you get your internship, you're still in that interviewing process for some future opportunity or future connection. And so this past summer, I was in a virtual landscape and it was in some ways a lot more challenging to connect with people and to feel like I had deep connections. So I had to be very intentional. Um, and with that came this understanding that these people really just want you to come with enthusiasm. Um, I had some imposter syndrome going into that and understanding that I was there for a reason was really big for me. And I think any young professional or college student grapples with those feelings. So finding security and knowing I was supposed to be there was huge. That's great. Thank you. And Ken, you've managed interns and you've managed um, employees uh, in their first couple of years out of college. And so what are the kinds of things that really allow people to stand out as far as you're concerned as a manager of somebody who can do really good job on that internship? What are those qualities that would get them a job offer or in their first year to get them, you know, to be promoted to more responsibility? What are some of those unique things that people really need to know, but often, you know, a lot of college students don't, don't know that from somebody like you. Mm. Well, um, internships are for on the, on the provider side are sometimes difficult to pull off. And the reason it is, is because you only have the student for a short period of time and you want them to have something meaningful to do, you know, not just be sitting in the office or making copies or whatever. Uh, so from the, from the management side, it's, a, it's hard to, it, it's, it's, companies don't tend to do internships well. Let me just put it that way. In general, companies don't do them well. And if you gave all the interns truth serum coming out of the internships, you really get some serious learning that that is true. But, but, but the characteristics that shine through to your question, Carol, is um, one, you still like to see the students have some perseverance. You want that. And most interns who, who get these opportunities do. You, you, if there's some way for them to show um, what I, I kind of like to call, for lack of a better word, let me just call it curiosity, um, you know, willingness to learn, willingness to uh, try to take something away from the experience that they're getting, even as poorly designed as they probably are. Um, that's something that you look for in the student. But then lastly, it's the point that I, uh, a comment that I made earlier, and I'll come back to it is, you know, people like you guys, these, these young women here on this call, they will stand out anywhere. Um, they, they have the it factor. And companies look for the it factor. You know, you, I, you can't say, I can't tell you what it is, but I know it when I see it, that it's, it's that, it's that student that that just kind of has it and enthusiasm is one element of it but not to where it's a burden on you where you gotta you know you know as asana said here fake it too much because that'll wear you out energy wise but but you know the, the positive side uh so that so i would just say uh carol in a nutshell patience with the fact that you might be in a poor internship design being able just to withstand it, one, because I think most companies know they don't do it well. Uh, so they showing that you have the patience to, to, to take it, um, as long as it's ethical. Now, I'm not talking about unethical stuff, right? We, you know, but patience to take it, one. Secondly, be yourself, but, but if you're a motivated person naturally, let your motivation come through, that you look for that uh, in an intern. And if there's a way for you to let them know during that window that you, you would like to take on more if they're not keeping you busy enough, if there's a way to do that, 
uh, do that too. And, and I think those things will carry on where they will want you to be back as, as one of the uh, uh, people here said, well, it's kind of really an extended interview because it is. Um, they will want you to be back. Uh, they will tell other people in their network about you, even if it's not for their own company. They'll help you expand to get into those types of things. So, so that's 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 what I would say there. And let me just close on a personal thing. Two of the worst jobs I ever had in my life were internships. Ever worst, total, miserable, horrible. <laughs> and I'm just being honest with you. However, they were beneficial because I learned what I didn't want to do. I think Haley, you, one of you said, well, boy, I, I, after doing that, I knew I didn't want to do that again. And, and so it is beneficial to do an internship no matter what, uh, to take these kind of things away from it. I agree. And I think that um, no matter what the internship is, or if it's not a good fit for you, whatever, if you can still make the most out of it, if you can still do your very best, if you can still over deliver, even if you're not loving it at all, what that will show you is over the course of your life, there's going to be different challenges and different situations that are hard. And you're going to be able to deal with them really well, because you were able to deal with this kind of situation, make it the best possible outcome possible. So um, that's just, I think, always think of, you know, how can you over deliver? And it sounds like Kimberly and Barbara and the fellows that have been working with APLU this year are those, you know, people that have those qualities, which I think is great. So in our time remaining, let's look at leadership and what are some of the maybe the inside secrets or aspects of leadership that where these different students are, whether they're sophomores or they're seniors or whatever, um, what are some real opportunities and ways to look at how to lead, how to lead inclusively, how to lead respectfully, how to lead with people who think very differently than you. And, um, and let's, let's start first with Isana. Um, because she's a senior, and then we'll go to Charlene Haley and then Ken on that one. Go ahead, Isana. Yeah, I've been really grateful to have many leadership positions throughout college, and one that really shaped me is my role as president of the consulting club here at my university, and I realized I thought leading was a lot more simple than it actually is, and a big part of leading for me man constantly getting feedback from the people who I was working with to see what I needed to change. And a big part for me as well is not taking that feedback personally. I have a lot of I have a lot of love for what I do and that can play into ego, it can play into pride and being able to objectively say I'm trying my best and there's still changes that will I that I will need to make is a hard balance sometimes and leaning into that discomfort was huge for me. Um, so I would say it's like an iterative process, constantly forming and shaping and reshaping. And I think really listening to people and understanding what they need is the second part of that. Making sure that you're not leading just for, I don't know, your resume. I think a lot of college students go mm -hmm. and look for leadership positions for that type of experience. But once you get to an interview, they're gonna ask you questions about what you actually did. And if you can't speak to that and it didn't truly impact you, that's a problem. So making sure that it aligns with what you are working towards is really big. Um, and I think as for the part of how you can seek out those intern or those leadership opportunities, I would say show consistency. If you are focusing on one organization that you really like, make sure you're showing up to their meetings for their weekly meetings or whatever it might be and work your way up. Make sure you're forming personal connections with the people existing already on the executive leadership board. And with that enthusiasm and consistency comes trust and they will want you to be a part of their team because they can see easily what you would contribute. 
I think that's such a great point, that idea of people who are really delivering outcomes versus window dressing. And um, people are especially sensitive right now, coming out of the last um, couple of years, been so difficult um, that they really want to make sure people are who they say they are and that they're not padding their resumes or saying that they, you know, they were an X job, but they can't tell you one thing they did in that job. And so really a key point, Asana. Uh, Charlene, go ahead. Yes. I, when I think about leadership and so grateful and honored to have leadership opportunity, um, it, to me, a lot of it is about empathy. I, I'm very like people oriented. And I think um, when you're trying to motivate a bunch of people toward a goal and, you know, also support people's like natural strengths, all of that has to do with like kind of stepping outside of yourself to understand what people are good at what energizes them and kind of like the challenges they're dealing with. Um, and so like, for instance, in college, that looked like on eboards, like if someone's dealing with a really stressful time in school with classes right now, well then, okay, like how is that manifesting in this group meeting? And like, I, we need to be aware of that as president or leadership. And um, how can I be supportive of getting the work done and, and, and move away from shame, blame, any other like negative spill of emotion that can come from that, that can come from having a less than empathetic view. Um, and so I think it's just really important, like especially with leadership usually comes some level of power, right? That um, you, you aim to distribute it uh, and be really just um, a person still, right? You don't like the ego or the pride get in the way of you being a person that connects to the people that you are leading, that understands that all of you are working towards something really big. You want everyone to be energetically invested in that so that people stay motivated. And so I think it's just really important to be connected to, to the folks you work with. Oh, Carol, you're muted. Hold on. Michael has just asked to get questions from Kimberly and Barbara. So maybe we could get some questions and then Haley and Ken can answer those questions. If you all want to unmute and, uh, and ask your questions, we'd love that in the time remaining. Um, yeah, I, I'll go ahead and go. Um, I think um, the thing I'm going through now is going from the accounting world into business. Um, and you guys were saying to, to find some mentors that maybe you wanted to, uh, that kind of match your own interest in where you're going. I'm having problems doing that because where I want to go is cutting edge technology with accounting and that's just not quite there yet. So I've been leaning towards, you know, the IT or the IS field. You know, I wouldn't know how to reach out to anybody that does accounting in that and don't really know where to look because the larger companies really aren't quite there yet. This is all cutting edge stuff. So well, um, how would you go about researching? Because I have a large network already, um, you know, through LinkedIn and, and KSU has a a mentorship uh, program already. So, okay, go ahead. I'll just say really quickly, Kimberly, that um, we work with Salesforce and their um, data for good team, helping us developing the, the AI for our bold goal. And some of those folks are from the, the, you know, the finance department and some from accounting. So maybe we can network through them because I think there is that Venn diagram of what you're talking about. So we can reach out to them and uh, see if there's a way that you could have um, an internship or a mentor or something through, the, through them. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I actually have somebody in one of my classes who's um, works for Salesforce, so it's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that sounds partner, really cool. Partner of ours, yes. Um, Barbara, do you have any questions? I know you guys have to leave in like three minutes. We want to make sure we get your, your questions answered. I guess the one question I have is what do you look for most in the overall quality of what you've enjoyed in an internship? What, what, what do you see as the main factor, or main growth or something that you want to see from interns? <laughs> Haley, you want to go pretty quickly and then we can go to Ken. Yeah. Um, so I think you asked from interns. So I don't know. I can give you my own personal, like what I got, got from it. And I just think it's, 
I, whether you're looking for an internship, it's kind of a crapshoot and a kind of a risk. So I would just try to find an organization that you think at least aligns, like their mission aligns with what you're interested in. And then um, while you're there, to, in order to get the experience that you want, be willing to have that conversation with your supervisor and just say, hey, like, I heard through the grapevine that this is something you're working on. Can I get some hands on that? Or, you know, just try to be as communicative as possible um, so that you can get involved in things that you want. Thanks, Haley. Ken, go ahead. We have exactly, I think, like two minutes to, to close. So, yeah. So, so, to, so to, to the last question there, I, I totally agree with Haley. And, and if you're looking for something, that's a perfect way to go about it, as, as Haley mentioned. And in terms of if you're in the intern uh, role, we talked about it earlier, but I would just simply say in a nutshell, try to be sponge-like, absorb as much as you can because that's why you're paying the price you're paying for going to the internship. And so, so that's what I would just say there. Um, and I wanna go back, if you don't mind, Carol, I want to take a second on uh, uh, one of the other questions that Charlene was talking about. Uh, and, and it was, uh, I can't remember the specific question, but one of the things I want to add to it, because I thought her answer was so good was, um, no matter what you do, all of us, and I think this is a life principle, um, you want to, oh, empathy. It, it was where the comment when she was talking about empathy, that is one of the great skills, attributes, all humans could have. And it goes in your personal life, your professional life, it will support you for a long time. So, you know, do that and be that, because people like that. And pair that with be authentic, just, know who you are and as soon as you can get comfortable in your own skin uh, and let that follow you through your internships through your professional life and through mentoring because people love that they know now that it's not artificial uh, thank in, you in kimberly and barbara they have to jump but you know what guys we can do a couple of minutes kind of after talk we'll just do maybe one one more thing since we're recording this and um, why don't we just very quickly go around one more time because I think both Barbara and Kimberly have to jump off. But thank you ladies for being here and we're looking forward to working with the rest of your colleagues and other folks in our um, internship network. And we hope you'll watch those inclusive leader awards that um, Mike provided you the link for because I think you'll see a lot of amazing people there who can also be really great for perspective in terms of their life path. Thanks guys. And Mike, we'll just do a real quick kind of a summary here so that when we record this, we'll have that for people who are watching it later. When he that makes, sounds, is that, that okay? Sounds great. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you, Carol. And thanks to all okay. of you. Excellent. All right. So why don't we start with um, Charlene and we'll just go around the circle, just maybe one sentence on final insight for people thinking about building their uh, skills, working with the mentor, their leadership skills, their, their inclusive leading skills and their professional skills. Maybe just um, a final insight from each of you. And we'll start with Charlene. Yeah, um, well, get to know yourself, but don't force it um, is what I would say. There will be opportunities, people, things. Um, and you wanna just accept the things that feel good to you. So. Great, Haley. Yeah, I just want to mention that I think every single person on this panel at one point or another said something like, I didn't know what I was doing, or I didn't like this, or I did not want this. And that is okay. It is okay to try something and not like it and maybe fail along the way. Isana, go ahead. Yeah, find clarity with what you want, both per personally and professionally and have that reflected on who you choose to be your role model and be proactive about finding someone. Usually people like helping people out. So don't be too scared about reaching out and trust that it's gonna work out. Ken? Just always be willing to listen and be willing to learn. And I always love the, um, the Winston Churchill quote that success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. I was a senior in college, 
not anywhere near as mature as Isana. And I didn't even know what I wanted to do by Christmas. And my brother kind of helped me think it through. So, you know, I think you have to trust in yourself in the process and, and work hard and be a good person and really great things will, will open up to you. So thanks to all of you. And Mike, do you want to kind of close it out? Sure. Well, thank you all. Thank you all very much. I think, um, you know, as I said in the chat to, to Kim and Barbara, I think there's uh, just a tremendous wealth of really good advice. And just um, and just to hear each of your stories, I think itself is really valuable, too. Um, so, you know, I thought this was terrific. Um, all the sort of questions I had jotted down, you, you kind of, you know, organically answered it just by, you know, um, through, you know, through Carol's moderation and your own, you know, what you felt like sharing. I think uh, ended up being really terrific. Um, so just just really grateful, and I think it'll be a tremendous resource for our uh, Every Learner Everywhere student fellows. Thank you, and we will send you all the link later. And also, just so you know, Mike, and you can share that um, on the tenth. The Young Professional um, Inclusive Leaders Council is having another event. And so all of your folks are welcome, you know, for any of their sessions, any of our monthly equity sessions, anytime. So we'll continue to knit these different um, worlds together for these kinds of resources. Sounds fantastic. All right, everybody, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for making time for this. And it was really fun to be with you all for the last hour. <laughs>